Hi there, and welcome to Energy Transfer and Atmospheric Circulation with Mr. Mercer. In this question, what you are being asked to do is to explain how energy is moved from the equator to the poles and back again. Um, the logical place to begin is always with the sun's radiation arriving at Earth. And after that point, try and tell it as if it were a story. On your screen, what you can see is a hemisphere of Earth um, with zero degrees representing the equator, 90 degrees north representing the North Pole. I've sketched in the cellular system. I've given you both the southern and the northern hemisphere, but we'll only concern ourselves with the northern hemisphere. You don't need to worry about what's happening in the south because it's all a mirror image anyway. Okay, so let's get started. What happens first? Well, first things first, the overhead sun causes rising low pressure air at the equatorial low. Hot air rises. This means that it pushes down on the earth with less force, so we refer to it as low pressure air. The rising air is then forced to spread polewards and forms part of the Hadley cell, which you can see labelled on your screen. At 30 degrees north, otherwise known as the subtropical high, the warm air begins to cool and therefore sinks. Falling air pushes on the Earth's surface and is referred to, therefore, as high pressure air. Some of that air is going to, as you can see, return into the Hadley cell. We call the returning air the northeast trade winds. You can see those blowing across from 30 degrees to 0 degrees now on your diagram. Some of the air, however, at the subtropical high spreads north to fuel the thermally indirect feral cell, which you can see operating now. It's called thermally indirect because it's not powered by the sun in the way that the Hadley cell is. It's powered by the other two cells on either side of it. It has its own set of winds, which blow towards the northeast. Of course, you must remember that that means we refer to them as southwesterly winds. Now, those winds blow transferring energy from 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north, otherwise known as the polar front, which you can see has appeared on the diagram. At the polar front, some of the energy is transferred to the polar cell, where it's displaced by cold, dense air returning from the poles. It's at this point that the transfer of energy from the equator to the poles is pretty much complete. There's only one more thing to mention, and that is the surface winds uh, returning from the pole. These are called northeasterlies, and they return cold air back into the system. Now, the key thing to um, refer to in this answer is the transfer of energy. You're not being asked about the movement of air. You're being asked about the movement of heat, if you like. Um, so constantly tie your answer back, as you can see I have done in the notes on the right-hand side of your screen, um, tie your answer back to the movement of energy from the equator to the poles and back again. Okay, I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, come and find me in class um, or check out other resources on the Geography Geeks website. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a like so I can know what to make more of in future. Okay, bye.